gosh. From the time I can remember, from when I was a little kid, I've always been attracted to water and I always wanted to know what was beneath it. What's what's below the surface? What's there? And someday then just, just being able to snorkel and scuba dive and see it all. My name is Becky Kagan Schott and I'm a professional underwater photographer and cinematographer. The first time I went underwater, I remember looking around. It's, it's so peaceful and beautiful. It was like going into a new world, a whole different planet. I don't know how, but I need to do this the rest of my life. I'm gonna be a diver. The gear we use when we're technical diving is extremely important. It takes us a lot of time just in the prep to set everything up. I use a checklist just so we don't skip any steps. Diving doesn't have anything to do with adrenaline. We practice for months sometimes for different emergencies when they happen because little mistakes can cost you your life. I've suffered from decompression sickness. It was extremely painful. You know, it took me two chamber rides for the pain to go away. And you know, that whole time I would just I was just thinking, am I ever gonna dive again? But in the biggest injuries have been to my heart, to be honest. I've lost so many friends over the years in this sport. Um, in 2019 alone, I lost five friends in one year. And sometimes it makes me question whether or not, you know, I should continue doing these risky dives. I lost my dad when I was 12 and it taught me that life is short and that I should pursue my dreams and, and never stop. But you have to keep moving forward and move past them to accomplish what you want to set out to do. Between all of the training, practice, learning to dive in all of these different environments and skill sets, it's taken me 26 years to get to where I am today. When I'm underwater, time just kind of stands still and it disappears. I forget about everything that's going on in life or on the surface and you know, you're just you're just in the moment. It's really peaceful because you're basically, you know, you're listening to the sounds of your own breathing and you're just so aware of everything that's going on around you. The typo sits in about 190 feet of water, close to 200 feet. It sank in the late 1800s and it was a wooden schooner. It was hit in the stern and it was carrying coal. So it went down hard and fast within four minutes. Here in the Great Lakes, these wrecks are perfectly preserved in the cold, fresh water. When I'm diving on them, it's like diving on a time capsule. You go down and history just becomes alive and you're seeing something from the past. So I had to be a diver first, and I had to go to all of these different environments and fall in love with them 
and because I fell in love with them, then that comes through in my photography. I am sometimes diving in both the Arctic and Antarctic, and then maybe my next shoot will be in Micronesia filming shipwrecks in warm water, just like covered in coral. Whether that's to a remote place on the planet that nobody's ever been to and capturing images that nobody has ever seen. I want to inspire people. The more people I can inspire with my work, the more people they'll care about the environment, they'll care about you know, these places that we're going to. You know, I was just born with this, this love for the water. I want to keep going to remote places. I just want to keep, I want to keep exploring. I want to keep diving. I feel restless until I can achieve it. Keep going forward. Prospects. Seiko.